Hey guys, Bread God Gaming here. This is my video that follows my guided tutorial video, and it will showcase how we take the feudal kingdom of Ireland into forming the Empire of Britannia. You can also use this as a standalone case study on how to form an empire from a kingdom. First, let's figure out how to achieve our goal. Let's filter the map into empire titles by clicking on the bottom right. If we click on Britannia, we'll see that we'll need 75 counties, 850 gold, and two kingdom titles. We have 14 counties, so we need 61 more. And here's a few ways on how we can conquer more land. The first way we can do is we can task our bishop with this fabricate claim on county. This method will be slow but steady. If your bishop has enough learning skill, like our current one is 15, you'll see that on the task here at the bottom left. Then you can see that there's a chance we can get lucky and get an entire duchy claim, which will make conquering even faster. If we come to the courtier tab here and to the your courtier section, sometimes there will be characters of claims and it'll show up as an icon over here. And if we scroll down, you'll see the only people in our court with some claims right now are our siblings. So my brother's claim on Ireland right here and my sister with her claims as well down here. There's also a button to invite claimants that if you click will lead you to the decision page. For 750 prestige, we can invite some claimants. However, they will be random, so they might not be in the targeted areas we want. Instead, there's a few ways we can get some targeted claimants. Let's first sort by duchies. And we don't want kingdom claimants because if we win those claim wars, we installed that person onto the throne and not ourselves. But if we help someone with a duchy claim, they will rule that new duchy as our vassal since we are a king and outrank them. So when we click on a duchy title here, for example, we'll see that there are claimants over here. We usually want male claimants because in most religions, such as Catholicism, only men can press their claims against other men. If a duchy is owned by a woman or a child, however, we can then press a female's claim on the title. If you right click them, you'll see that most times we can't invite them. So instead, here are some ways to force someone to join your court. The first way is to marry the desired target. You can marry yourself, a family member, or any available courtier off. In this example, I looked at the Duchy of Dehubarth, and Mirshion here is unmarried. If we right click him, you can see he doesn't want to be invited. However, he is unmarried, so we can arrange a marriage for him. If we check with Ein here, you'll see that he will not accept this marriage because she is a lowborn. If we swap her for one of my noble courtiers, you can tell because they have a house banner here. You'll see that he still won't accept. If I use my sister, he is a little bit more willing. However, we're still missing a little bit. But I can send some gold to make this a little more desirable. Just make note here that if you check the name here, you'll see that it's actually Captain Griffweed. And that's actually the recipient of this marriage proposal and not the person himself. So we want to send the gold to the captain by right clicking him and sending this gift and not to Mirshion here. So let me send the gift to the captain and so he'll like me a little bit better. And now when I try to arrange this marriage with my sister, you'll see that he will accept. We want this marriage to be matrilineal so that he comes to our court where my sister is. Otherwise, if I don't hit matrilineal, it'll default to patrilineal and then my sister will go over to his court. I think of patrilineal and matrilineal as who the head of the house is, so that the spouse will always travel to the head's hometown. So in a patrilineal marriage, the couple will stay at the man's home, versus matrilineal, the couple will stay at the female's home. So make sure you pick the correct type of marriage. Another thing you want to check down here is that no alliance is being made with the duchy's owner. Sometimes the target you're trying to marry is actually one of the children of the current duchy's ruler. So then the alliance will be made and then you can't really go to war with them. One last thing to check before sending this proposal is to check the guy's health. We want him to be in fine health. And since most people die naturally around 60 years, he's got a few years left to be useful for us. So if we send this proposal and we pass some time, he is now married to my sister, and he's actually in my court in Thomond. And now I can go to the Duchy of Duaberth, and if I right-click Declare War, you'll see that Mercian here will let me press his claims to take over this duchy. The second thing we can do is go down the Intrigue tree for the Truth is Relative perk. This will let us fabricate a hook. So we're here with Mercian again, and again you want to check the guy's health to make sure he's fine, and that he's a few years younger than 60. And now if I right click him in the hostile section, 
I can click the more here for the fabricate hook. You'll see that it'll, it'll take about two years at a 47% success rate. So let's fabricate that hook. To make it a little more successful, I can go to my council and I can use my spy master to support the scheme and he'll add his intrigue bonus to bring it up to 56%. I could even change him to someone with a little more intrigue for now. So I'm gonna do that. And now you can see that it's at 74% chance and the time has decreased to only 14 months. And once the hook is ready, you'll get an event. And we can see that we actually got a little lucky. We got a strong hook. Usually it's just a weak hook, but let's send in the entertainers. And now we have a strong hook on him and I can right click him. And now I can invite him to court. You'll see it won't accept unless I click use hook. And now if I click that, he is now in my court in Thalmond. And same thing, now I can go declare war and press Mercian's claims. The third way is also in an intrigue method, which is to get the kidnapper perk, and this gives you the abduct scheme. So if we come back to Mercian here, if we right click him and we go to the hostel section and more, we can see we can abduct him. And if I click that, you'll see that it has a pretty low chance to succeed and it'll take many years. But you'll see that if we come to the intrigue section, there's going to be some agents we can invite. So if we invite him and we double check to make sure our spy master is on support schemes and we'll change for a stronger spy master for now. You can see that our chance is less than 40%, which is kind of low. However, if I continue down this schemer tree and I go for a job done right, that gives 25% hostile scheme success and also schemer which gives us another 25% chance of success. You'll see that if I wait to get those, then this time around we'll be at 51%. This chance can still be increased by events that are gonna happen down the line. For example, this one gave us 10% extra chance. Once our scheme is ready, we can pay some gold for the chance to capture him. And now that we've succeeded, he's in our prison. So now the next part is if I right click him, I can negotiate his release, and now I can forcibly recruit him. And now he's in my court, and likewise I can come and declare war for his claims. Sometimes the claimant we want is in the court of our vassal. If we check our vassal in the Duchy of Ulster here, and click on their courtiers tab, and we scroll down here, we'll see that this person here has a claim on something. And if I click on him here, you'll see that he has a claim on the Duchy of Ulster. However, if we pretended that this was another claim, I could right click him and I could imprison him and there's a chance that I will succeed. And then likewise, as before, we can recruit him and use him to press the claim. There will be more of these opportunities as your realm gets a little bigger and more claimants will flock to your court or your vassal's court. And my last method is old fashioned seduction. This only works for targets we are attracted to. So if we check under our name, we'll see that we are hetero, meaning we can only attract hetero or bi females. This also means that we can only target duchies that have female rulers. So I have this example here with the Principality of Gwynedd. You'll see that it is ruled by female. And if I scroll down here, you'll see there are some women with claims. And the best targets are ones that are unmarried. So let me check to see if anyone's unmarried. So this one's unmarried, but she is probably going to die soon. So she might not be a good one. This girl is unmarried and her health is fine for now. If I right click her and I go to more personal schemes, I can see seduction. You'll see I have a 0% chance. So let's try for someone else. I found this target here. You'll see that she's young and she's unmarried. So I'm gonna right click her and I'm gonna go for the seduction scheme. I have a 25% chance to succeed right now. And I can increase this chance by sending her some gold to make her happier. So if I send her 50 gold, You'll see our chance goes up to 65% now, which is a lot better. So now that we're at the end, I'm going to try to seduce her. And it looks like we've succeeded. You can see here that she has become our lover. And we can right click her and you can see we can invite her to court. And that's because there's a massive plus 100 opinion for being a lover. And once she's in our court, now we can declare war for her claims on that duchy title. So these are just five basic methods on how to recruit people. There are more complicated methods and some that require the Royal Court DLC, but we'll stick with these for now. And the third way to conquer land is to use the recruiting methods to get the heirs of our targets. We then grant any title to that heir so they become our vassal. In this timeline, I abducted the young heir to the Duchy of Lothian. His father is also the Earl of Cumberland as bonus inheritance. The next step is to murder his father. 
after some time, his father died before our assassins could get to him. And you can see that our Earl of Dublin is now also the Earl of Cumberland. So our realm grew without any war. Our next target is going to be his grandfather who holds the Duchy of Lothian. One thing is, if we check the current situation tab, it'll tell us that our realm may lose land if our vassal inherits this duchy. This is because he is inheriting a higher ranking title, so once his grandfather dies, he'll inherit the duchy and take his current lands with him to serve the King of Alba. In this second example, before his grandfather dies, I'm going to create the Duchy of Meath and grant the title to him so he becomes a duke. You'll see that we don't get the will lose land notification anymore, and instead this time when we murder his grandfather, he inherits the duchy and remains in our realm. This is a great way to obtain lands without war. The only downside with this method is we need to give out some titles. For my current run, I'm going to recommend holding on to all of the Irish titles, and instead you could conquer these duchies in Wales over here and grant these lands to the air targets you want. There's even Cornwall down here which we could take from France. An even stronger inheritance strategy is to marry someone in line and have our kids inherit that target. For example, let's look at the inheritance line of the Kingdom of England. We can see there is a young son and daughter that are in line to inherit. And if we check on them, you'll see that they are unmarried. So in my playthrough, since I'm a young boy, I'm actually going to try to marry this daughter here. And it looks like they will accept. So I'm going to send that. So once we have kids, our children will be in line to inherit. So all I have to do is murder all these people in the way. And then once my wife is in power, make sure she stays in power. That way, eventually, our children will inherit the kingdom. Worst case, even if she loses the kingdom of England, our children will still inherit claims to the kingdom. And we can always fight for them in the future. One thing to note is that titles with elective laws don't work out perfectly because their inheritance is not based on this bloodline path. If we look at the Kingdom of Alba here, you'll see that their title is based on Tanistry Elective, so we won't be able to force our way into this line of succession because Tanistry limits the potential heirs to the ruling dynasty only. Our strategy going forward is mainly going to be inheriting this Kingdom of England and slowly conquering Alba. And the general gameplay loop is going to be fabricating a claim or recruiting a claimant, then going to war for those claims. Every time a war ends in victory, there is a 5 year truce, so optionally we can murder the enemy king to end the truce early. I'll be doing this to conquer Britannia in a timely manner, and in between this loop, we'll be constructing buildings and military while suppressing factions. In a perfect world, we would inherit the Kingdom of England and take over Scotland at the same time so we can quickly make the Empire of Britannia title. I don't want to conquer the Kingdom of Wales down here because if I form a second kingdom too early, my son will have to keep fighting his potential brothers to reunite the two kingdoms. This is because Confederate Partition Succession will form titles I don't even own as long as I meet the land requirements. So if we check the Kingdom of Wales here, if I own at least 7 titles upon my death, my heirs will split the kingdoms of Ireland and Wales. However, if we check out the innovations, once our culture gets the hereditary rule innovation, we have access to partition succession, which only splits titles that exist. So I don't have to keep reconquering these lands over and over again. However, this is going to take some time, and that is again why I'm going to slowly conquer Alba. The added advantage is that if someone owns the kingdom title already, then even if I conquer 90% of the lands of Alba, Confederate partition won't trigger to create a title. So just to show how these successions would play out, in this scenario I'm 33 and I own the Kingdom of Ireland. I have two sons and I have Confederate Partition. My oldest son is set to inherit the Kingdom of Ireland and the titles inside Ireland. My other son is set to inherit the Kingdom of Wales, even though I don't own it. You can see I can create it, but I haven't. And if you take a look under, you'll see I do not own the title. Now once I die, you can see the realm splits into two kingdoms. As my son, I do have a claim over my brother's Kingdom of Wales, which I could easily take back this kingdom. However, repeat this over and over can be annoying, which is why I recommend going for the Kingdom of Alba in this scenario. In this second situation, I did not conquer enough titles to create the Kingdom of Wales, and you can see that thanks to elective succession, everything will pass to my oldest son. 
You can see here I only own five of the seven required counties, so Confederate partition will not create this title. Returning to a different scenario number one, in this situation we have partition succession, and you can see that our second son would not inherit this kingdom of Wales title even though we have enough lands to create it. However, if I create this kingdom title, then you can see realm splitting is back on the table. So with partition, make sure you do not own extra high level titles. You can even destroy your extra titles if needed. This way all the lands stay under you. Hopefully this shows how confederate partition versus partition works. And this is why in our run we're going to slowly conquer the kingdom of Alba over the next few decades. So now that we know all the ways to conquer and forcibly absorb lands, the other important thing in any run is to make sure we are the richest and most powerful. It doesn't matter what character you play as, I always will recommend these things. So we want to prioritize a stewardship education to get the most domain limit and tax increase. Depending on how many counties we hold, we might have to marry a wife with high stewardship and assign her to this council role to help us manage our domain. She will give you half her skill as a bonus. Just remember domain limit is plus one per six stewardship. If you have enough stewardship to hold everything or you're only over by one or two, then it's okay since my next recommendation is to go down the architect tree. You can either go for the wealth focus to get extra tax or the domain focus to get a few more stewardship points. Eventually, if you go down architect, you'll have the divided attention perk which gives you plus two to the limit. If you really have too many lands and need to grant something away, you can grant your lands to an old man who has no kids. So when he dies, you'll eventually get that title back. You can rinse and repeat for as long as you need this self storage option. Once we get the architect perk, we're gonna switch to a scholarship focus in the learning tree to increase our development and to get the scientific perk to increase our technology research and then work on this whole of body tree to live longer. Long live rulers means we can use all these hard earned perks longer and it also means if our son inherits when he is older, he will start out with a few perks and be stronger than if he inherited too young. Once we finish this whole of body tree, I will just continue down the scholar tree so we can increase our skills, especially learning as much as possible. The reason we want good learning is if we come to the culture page, you'll see that right now our culture head is our vassal because we are underage. You'll see that her progress is down here based on her learning. And if you hover over the battlements, you'll see that she gets a 38% chance to gain 0.44 progress per month. However, if our development is higher and if we have a higher learning and also we have the scientific perk, then we can blaze through this research a lot faster. After we finish battlements, we will advance to the high medieval era and we'll want to rush these technologies in this order. So the first thing we're going to go for is windmills. This will give us strong gold making buildings. Then we're going to unlock guilds for higher level economic buildings and also another building slot. Then we want to go for hoardings so that we can upgrade our castles further and therefore level up the buildings even more. And next we're going to have castle baileys. This is going to unlock the upgrade levels for military buildings. And after this you can do whatever you want. I'm going to go for advanced bow making as these shooting ranges gives good gold for my armies and I plan to mostly use crossbowmen and some armored footmen. Divine Right is also a good technology since you can press all of your county claims at once instead of doing them one at a time. For cultural traditions, we're going to go with Wetlanders. This gives us a 25% development boost and it makes our defenses stronger since our capital is in the wetlands. Then I'm going to go for Xenophilic since this will help us rule over different cultures. You can skip this if you want to convert all of Britannia to Irish, but this will also help if you wanted to conquer more of Europe later. Next, I like Recognition of Talent. This is one of my favorites because you'll be able to get strong hooks on your vassals and therefore they will never be able to rebel. Catholicism is even more broken because things like adultery and witchcraft are a sin and and as you might experience your your vow and as you might experience your vassals are going to be very sinful and you'll have random notifications pretty often that a vassal has slept with someone's mom and because of that now you get a strong hook on him for as long as they live. The next tradition I like is hereditary hierarchy. This is going to help build up our holdings even more and also provide some tax and opinion. These are just suggestions. You can always use something else if you want to. For buildings, we have holdings in plains and wetland terrain. And some holdings are going to be coastal holdings, which means that they border water. 
such as Dublin or Loch Garman or Port Large. Once we unlock the windmill and guild innovations, there will be a total of six building slots per holding. The buildings I'm going to list can be built in other terrains as well, but I'll only point out the ones that matter for Ireland. In general, the building order will be prioritized by most gold production possible. So first is water mills, which is available in wetlands. It's unlocked after the windmill innovation, and it gives huge tax and massive development. It also has a building discount, so I would build this one first. Next is Windmill, which is buildable in Plains and Coastal. It's also unlocked after Windmill Innovation, and it gives huge tax and massive development as well, but it doesn't have a building discount. Some places like Thaumund, you can build both the Water Mill and the Windmill. Just build the Water Mill first for that little discount. Next is Farms and Fields, which is only available in Plains. This provides great tax. Then we have Trade Port, which is only available in Coastal, and it gives you a good amount of tax and huge development bonuses. Next is Wetland Farms, which only can be built in wetlands, and they provide good tax and construction cost and time bonuses. Next is Workshops, which is buildable in any terrain after the advanced bow making innovation. It gives good tax and a big bonus to archer damage, and a lot of siege bonuses. It even gives a little cultural innovation progress, which is nice. And by this point, the holding will either be filled out or have maybe one slot left. This last slot you can use for a military building, like Militia Camp for Archer bonuses. I also recommend the Blacksmith building. At first, it only gives a small amount of Men in Arms bonus and little taxes, but at level 8, it gives up to 32% taxes, which is a huge number, and it's more effective when you have the other gold buildings already constructed. The Men in Arms bonus increases a bit, but is only about half as strong as a dedicated military building. I personally think gold is the best, so I will build blacksmiths for myself in this run. Also, while you are constructing these buildings, you might need to replace an existing building. You can do that by hitting the replace button here. Replacing these buildings for better gold buildings is 100% recommended. And lastly, for the duchy capitals, you're going to be able to build a duchy building. Many of these buildings are very strong, so take a look and see what you need. To construct duchy buildings, you need to hold the relevant duchy title. So for this county of Thalmond, you can see there's a duchy slot at the rightmost box with the little arrows. If you click at the top left section of this county, we can quickly view the required duchy title. Clicking it shows that we do indeed hold the Duchy of Munster title. Wondering why Thalmond has a Duchy slot, looking at the middle here shows that the Thajur capital of the Duchy of Munster is Thalmond. So each Duchy's Thajur capital county will have a Duchy slot. As you might guess, I love gold and therefore recommend tax offices, but siege works and archery are also very good for troops. For military, we're going to go for two armored footmen, two bowmen, and two siege units. After that, we're going to only add bowmen and maybe one more siege if you want. One of my strategies for maintaining a strong and rich army is that I match my income to my army expenses. So in this example, if we hover over our gold, you'll see our income is 16.3, and our current military expense is 1.2, and that is just to pay the unraised men in arms. If we look at the bottom of the army page here, we'll see that raising our entire army will cost around 11.8 gold, 8.1 is from peasant levies, and 3.6 from men at arms. This value is actually higher than what it would be since it is the cost after our troops have been summoned for more than 5 years, but I use this as a benchmark to make sure I'm always net positive. If we take 16.3 and subtract 11.8, we'll get 4.5 of net positive income. And being net positive means I can keep my troops summoned for as long as I need to wage the war, and that'll be really good against kingdoms that can't maintain their army forever, and those enemies, even when they're bigger, can go into debt and you can actually beat them because of the debt penalties. So I'm going to raise all my troops over here, and you can see that the total cost is only 8.7 per month and not the 11.8. If you hover over the 8.7, you'll see that we get a 24% discount from Organized Army and 1% discount from our Martial Skill level of 9. If we check the council here, you'll see that our marshal is currently on the organized army task, and this is what's giving us that big discount. So if you need that extra buffer, you can check if your marshal is on this task or not. If my kingdom is stable without any major factions, then I would spend almost all of my gold. If I think I need a little buffer, then I save enough for just one set of mercenaries, which in this case is around 250 gold. Don't forget to check your ruler's health and stop spending when you're in the poor stage to save for your heir succession. 
So this is just a listed summary of what we've spoken on. The build orders will be in the description. The rest of the video is gameplay of my Ireland to Britannia run. I'll skip boring battles and events and speak about difficult cases or strategy tips. If you have questions, post a comment below. If you've enjoyed the content so far, I would appreciate your subscription to my channel and a like to my video. Thank you. Let me take this Kingdom of Ireland to form the Irish Empire of Britannia. First, I'm going to check the duchy titles for any claimants that I can invite or recruit to my court. So I didn't see anyone that I could invite, so let's use our bishop to start fabricating a claim here on Galloway. Hopefully he gets us a duchy claim. Let's go to the decision tab and use invite claimants and hope we get some relevant ones. Also for those of you that didn't come from the first tutorial video on forming Ireland, I have a lot of prestige because I participated and won a crusade. Also, since we're a child, we're going to be in a regency. You can check the regency info by going to the realm page at the top here. We're sharing power with my uncle here. A benefit of regencies is that we get an extra domain limit of plus two, thanks to his aptitude. Most importantly, on the left here, we can see my uncle's loyalty is selfless. This bar here is the scales of power between us and my uncle. Over time and with events, my regent uncle can gain more powers and even perform a coup to take over my kingdom at max level. Because he is selfless though, it's unlikely that he will do this. On the left here are some tasks we can assign him to perform. Fill coffers, swell armies, promote authority. Based on aptitudes and skills you can preview here. I want more gold so I'll put him on fill coffers. When we become an adult at 16, we'll be able to discharge him. So returning to our conquests, you can see that I've built up a good stack of gold. And if I check my factions, you'll see that they are a little too weak. And a direct way to check how much military power you have is if you come to the realm tab here, you'll see that from my domain I get 1800 peasants. And if I check my men at arms here in the military tab, I have 500 troops when they're fully formed, so I have about 2300 total. If I check on my vassals, you'll see that my duke only has 900 troops, you'll see that my other duke only has barely 500, and my last count has just over 800. So I'm more than powerful enough to squash any of their rebellions right now. So since I'm confident I'm very strong compared to my vassals, I'm going to start building some buildings. Let's check what kind of buildings I could build here. So there's none of the buildings I would recommend, so instead I'm going to upgrade the trade port. So let's check out Ennis. I have wetland farms I could upgrade or the trade port. Because the trade port's a little more expensive than the farms right now, let me upgrade that farm. That gives me 270 to still spend, so let's go to Ormond. Let's check what kind of buildings we can build here. Nice. So it was missing a trade port, so let me construct that. And if we scroll down a little further, let's check out Desmond. Let's see if we can build anything worthwhile. You can see we could go for a wetland farm, so let's build that. And that's all the gold I have. So now I'm just going to pass some time until something happens. Okay, so we got a notification for a lot of people with claims, so let's come to our courtiers. Let's click this magnifying glass to filter, and I'm going to filter for persons with any claims. And so let's see this girl here. So this girl has a claim to the Duchy of Normandy. You'll see that Normandy here is independent and owns some pieces in Cornwall and England. And so she actually might be useful. Let's check this other girl. She's got a claim in the Earldom of White, and that's going to be this little piece here in England. Since I plan to inherit England, I don't really need her right now. And let's check the last guy. He's got a claim on the County of Montargis, and this is somewhere in France, which I don't care about. All right, so let's come back to Eleanor here. Let's check out who's ruling Normandy. So you see Prince Richard here rules the Duchy of Normandy. That means that even if I recruit Eleanor, she won't be able to press the claim on him since she is not a man. The other thing is that because she is 59, she's already starting to die. So even if I could press her claim, if she dies in the middle of our, if she dies in the middle of the claim war, then it will automatically end in peace because there's no one to press the claim for. And lastly, let's check her price. She's just way too damn expensive. So even though the territory would have been nice, right now it just doesn't make sense. So I'm going to continue passing some time. Looks like another person came with a claim on Oxir, which again is in France, in the middle of nowhere. And these notifications up here are for ransoms. So actually if I check here, you'll see I can ransom a lot of people. These are actually all the prisoners I got from the crusade. So let me just ransom them for money. So a lot of money's coming in. And with this amount of gold, I can actually come back and maybe build some extra buildings. So let's check out what I can build in Ossery. 
All right, so I see immediately I could build farms and fields, so let's do that. Let's check out Leinster and see what I got to build here. So also farms and fields, so let's do that. And then Dublin, let's see if there's anything here. And look at that, also farms and fields. So let's build that. Thank you for the crusade stimulus. So I got this event that someone's giving me a plush carpet. This is kind of a spoiler, but this means that someone's trying to murder me. If I accept the carpet, you'll see I get reduced chance to prevent assassinations. So instead, I'm going to get rid of it and be more resistant. And I'll also get some gold. Let me double check to see if I have any rivals. I don't have any rivals, so someone's just trying to kill me, I guess. Let me check my council and my spy is protecting myself with disrupt schemes. So we'll just have to hope that he does succeed. Worst case, I can always fall back to my brother. Let's actually make sure he's being educated in stewardship. Unfortunately, it looks like he'll struggle, but that's okay. He's a genius, so actually he's smarter than us. Let's get him educated. Let's make sure our guardian for him is high stewardship. So although my bishop has more stewardship than Dubdil over here, Dubdil has a fortune builder education, so she'll actually be a better choice here. In fact, let's double check our guardian. It looks like it's the same case. Let me remove him, and then let me add Dubdil. Okay, so I could pick my first trait. I could be diligent, I could be gregarious, and also become a drunkard at age 9 or temperate. I'm going to go for temperate since it gives us stewardship and it's virtuous. Because of this virtuous trait, if we check our factions, you'll see that the duke actually left. And that's because if I click on him, he actually likes us enough because of this temperate virtue. So super nice to have. Looks like I can get a pet cat, so I'm going to accept that. Let's name him Brian. I can realize I'm heterosexual. Looks like a trade port is constructed, so if I come back to Realm, let's continue constructing stuff. I don't really have any of those buildings I could build, and I also don't want to upgrade the Hunter's Lodge because eventually I'm going to replace it. So let's check out the duchy buildings. So like I said, I want to go for tax offices, so it looks like I'm just going to need a little more gold for that. So let me just keep going. And I got a notification for our claim on Callaway, so let me pay the fee. It also looks like we're lucky that he's already at war, so he's going to have to contend with both of us. I'm going to immediately start my guy on the next piece, which is going to go for Carrick. And if I review our strengths, it looks like we are just much stronger. So let's declare a war to start our conquest. Let me move my rally point closer. I'm going to raise everyone, and I'm going to go for Galloway. These orange armies are hostile, so I would fight them if we land on the same tile, but you don't need to since they are not part of the war effort. Instead, you see here that this is a red army, this is the direct enemy, and this is who I want to take out. Let's first take care of this Galloway before I head over. I'm not going to assault the fort since I need to keep my numbers strong. Looks like he's also going to take a few months. Great. All right, so let me click here and see if I can beat him. It looks like the AI will predict that we will win and the battle will come in 36 days. Let's check how long the siege is going to take. It's only going to take 16 days, so this might change since he'll take over the holding. So let's see what happens. All right, so he took it over and looks like he's already moving, so I'll have to chase him. It looks like if we do get there, we might be able to win, so let's try to chase him. He's still running away, so let's keep going. Looks like he's defending wetlands, so the AI says that I might win, so I'll let it play out. If I really need to, I can go to the military tab. I can change my rally point to be a little closer, such as right here, and I can hire some emergency mercenaries if needed, and they can immediately be summoned here to support my main army. So let's see what happens. Let's click on the battle. So it looks like we are losing a little bit, so let me go ahead and summon these mercenaries. I'll be a little in debt, but that's okay because I expect to get income soon. So you see how they appeared immediately, and now I can right click so that they can come over. So let's watch. We're losing, and then we're going to win because we have more soldiers now. I'm going to come and take back Ulster now. Let me combine my armies. And look, our income already made us more positive, so we're out of debt. So you'll see that we're at 24% war score. We owned Galloway, which is the target. We've beaten him in a good battle. And because we've held the target for a few months now, we're slowly gaining a percent a month. Once we take out Ulster, we'll be even closer to winning. So let's check out how that plays out. So you can see that this thing is ticking up because we hold Galloway. It's now at 12%. So to get our score higher, let's take over some other lands like Carrick over here. 
So we got another trait event, and we could be generous, fickle, or we could be arrogant. I don't like generous because I will lose income. Fickle is not the greatest since it'll reduce our stewardship, but it, it's pretty good for protecting ourselves. Arrogant is going to make us lose a lot of opinion with our bishop and also is not too useful for ruling. So let me go with fickle. Hopefully this will also protect me from that murder scheme. So a lot more things are built and you see our income is now higher. Looks like a faction was created. However, they're kind of weak. Okay, so I expect to win this war soon. It also looks like the Kingdom of England is under attack. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, okay, that's not good. So if he loses this throne, then we won't be able to inherit it. So I want to help him out if I can. Let me try to get allied to him first. Okay, so looks like I'll have to marry off my sister. He's not going to accept matrilineal, so that's okay. So it looks like we'll have to win this war and then quickly help him. So we are allied to him. Let's offer to join his war. Now we can see it looks like the enemy's over here. So once we win this war, we'll need to go down immediately to help him. Okay, let's get that claim since we're there. This is our last personality trait. So we got arrogant, compassionate, and looks like callous. So again, I don't want arrogant. Compassionate is a virtuous trait, but it's going to make trying to murder people very stressful. So I'm actually going to go for callous. It's actually going to help us with murdering and preventing murders. So we won that war against Alba. Let's get the land. I'm going to grant this title now, so let's sort by Irish culture and also Catholic religion. And let's look for some content vassals. And let me sort by prowess to get a stronger knight. Let's give this title to him. Great. And now i got to go down and help secure my future kingdom. So let's come down. You'll see that even though we have more troops, I might lose this battle because he's got more men-at-arms. Let's see if we can win this. Looks like we caught him unawares, so we're going to be able to crush this. Awesome. Alright, so we won that. We got some war score. If we hover over, it looks like he's lost a lot of battles, so it's going to take a lot to swing it back. Now that we've destroyed half his army, we can probably take out this stack. So let's do that. This guy's got so many wars. All right, but the most important is this claim war and then the dissolution. Liberty war just means that if they do win, then the king's crown authority goes down, but that doesn't matter as long as he owns the title. I don't really care. So let's fight him off Cheshire here. Great. So let me take over these holdings and watch for where they move. So you see their troops all retreat back to their homes. Looks like they're going to stack up again over here. Uh, if I remember my mercenaries... They're going to go away soon, so I might need to hire some more. My bishop's also done with fabricating, so I'm going to actually use him to convert a county instead of getting more claims since I'm at war right now. He also doesn't like me, so let me start swaying him. And you know what? At the same time, to make sure that at least I can make Duchess Wolfwin the queen, let me first murder this king if I can. Looks like I probably can, so let's start that. So the guy I'm helping, I'm also trying to murder. Alright, let's continue where we are. Looks like he might lose that battle there. Okay, that's okay. Let's replace our commander since our counselor died. Let's put our duke here. Let's see if we can chase them down. Looks like it thinks we'll lose, so let's let's not do that right now. Let's take over some of these buildings. What's my mom doing? She wants to fight a tyranny war. Mom, I'm busy, please. Alright, we're gonna accept because otherwise if we decline, we'll lose fame. So let's just accept for now. We just won't help her unless we have time. Let's continue taking over. Actually, one thing to note here is now that this guy is on the capital, if he happens to capture the King of England, then we will instantly lose. So I'm actually gonna come back up here to push him off. Looks like we successfully pushed them off, so let's go back. Let's actually try to destroy the army down there. Alright, looks like we won't be able to win, so let's just start taking over this title. We'll just watch him to see where he goes. Looks like he's wrapping around. Seven months versus five months, so it looks like we can take this back and then maybe challenge him. So just keep an eye out up here. Almost successful in my murder scheme. Alright, let's see. 
cool. So I got him down. Let's go for his brother. Not a good chance, but we'll try. So the reason why I want him to die and for my future mother-in-law to inherit is even if she becomes a queen and immediately loses the kingdom to one of these wars, she will get a press claim on it and then her daughter, which is my future wife, could get the claim back and I can always fight for the kingdom again. It looks like it went right up to 95% because everyone doesn't like him, I guess. So let's win this siege and then try to come over here. Let's come and challenge him. Looks like he's trying to take our ally out, so let's quickly help him. Looks like we just missed him, so let's focus on getting those titles back. Alright, I'm going to station some besiegers, and I'm going to move my big stack here so that you can see we can try to refill a few soldiers. Looks like we'll finish this in three months, also three months there. We can try to chase them around. We might be able to win, so let's see. Cool. So his men ran away, but we caught some of his allies. Very good. We killed all of them. You can see we wiped him. Let's see if we can catch him. Cool. So I think we can catch him. Hopefully we will be able to win. Looks like we're lucky and we're able to win there. You can see it was really close, and that's because he has so many men-at-arms right now, and also a lot more knights. Luckily, our knights are pretty strong, and we just had more peasants to help us. Okay. We took that place over, so let's come back and take this. Now this war is at 30% and I wish the AI would just go for white peace, but we can't force him to do that, so whatever. We also got to keep our eye on this dissolution war since it's starting to get up. So let's see, looks like the attacker's here, so let's go chase him down. Perfect, we can probably toast to him. Hopefully he dies. Great, now my mother-in-law is the Queen of England. So let's see if we can crush this. Doesn't look too good. Looks like I might have to hire some mercenaries. Don't know if they'll come there in time, but we'll try. So let's get him over here. And looks like I'm a man. As a man, I need to pick a lifestyle focus. So let's go for stewardship. I'm going to go for the wealth focus since we have enough stewardship right now. And it looks like our guys actually maybe will be able to turn it around. But those mercenaries should help anyways. I'm also now the new culture head, so let's check. So now we have beat them. Let's combine, station besiegers, move my big stack off so that they can refill. In the meanwhile, looks like she's calling in some allies because her troop count's a lot higher now. So let's see what the stats are now. So it looks like we got a lot more guys and they are being crushed. So I think we're going to be in the clear soon. So let me help her take out this war up here. In fact, I'm going to see where the guy is, so let me check. So it looks like he's commanding his army over here. You can see it's commanded by ruler. So I could try to kill this army to take him out, or I could just try to take out his lands here. So once I take this piece, I'm going to go for his lands with some of my troops, and I'm going to chase him down with my other guys. Ah, it looks like someone found out that I murdered. Looks like he's going to get a little hook on me. I'm going to click accept. Now the thing with hooks is he can change his contract. So if I right click modify vassal contract, you'll see that he can use a hook to get any of these rights. The worst one to have is council rights because that means he can join my council at will and I don't want him to have that. And this contract is going to be inherited by his son. So it's going to stay on there permanently. One way to avoid him using that hook for that purpose, I'm going to actually change his contract beforehand. So let me see what I could do. So because his tax is low, I actually want him to pay me more money and I don't really care about 51 peasants. You'll see if I just increase it, it's going to be tyranny. But if I decrease another thing, he's going to be okay with that. So we lose 50 peasants, but then we get 0.5 gold. And that gold is going to be a lot better than the peasants. The other thing we could have done is we could have just lowered one of these and he'll still be happy to do that and have more opinion. Another thing we could do is we could give him sanction war declaration, meaning he can declare war regardless. This is not too bad to give either. I don't want to give him title revocation either, in case I need to strip his titles away from him. So my favorite combo right now is going to be normal taxes, low levies. So let's modify that. Alright, let's continue with our wars here. So zoom out just so we can keep an eye on if our ally needs help. And our troops are refilling here as well. So I'm going to chase down this guy with my big stack. If I click here, I can preview 
He's got 400 men in the garrison, so these guys are not enough. So let's have him come back to combine. All right, he's running away pretty far. You'll see that there's this skull saying, if I keep moving across enemy lands, I'll take attrition. So I don't want to do that. So let me just direct everything back to taking over his land here. So you see that the auto pathing is going to go through these territories. This red territory is taken over by him. So to avoid walking through three pieces of his lands, I could click here and then hold the shift button and I could force my troops to move where I want them to. So you can see if I do that, they're going to walk into this county and not take any attrition because it's the correct way. And the castle's here, so let me direct them there. So now in this way, they'll go the correct way and take no attrition. Looks like he's flying back here. So let me see if I can actually chase them down with these guys. Let me preview this castle to see how many men are there. There's 550 guys there, so we probably need like 800 guys. So let me click on my big army. I'm going to click here so that they are standing still. I could actually split off some troops. Let me give them about 800 men. This will create a new army. And now I can have them follow into Durham so they could take over it together versus this big army. I should still be able to be strong enough. You can see I, I will win. So let's see how things play out. You can see he's still running away. So I won't be able to grab him. So let me just park myself here so that they're kind of pushed off. And you can see I don't have enough men with my first stack. So I have to wait for them to arrive. It looks like there's also a faction. However, it's just a peasant rabble. So they're going to be kind of weak. And we can deal with them whenever they pop up. My duchess still doesn't like me, but that's okay. She's too weak. So let's leave her alone. We got enough renown for another legacy. So let me click here. I'm going to continue down this path so that I can eventually get assertive rulers. So. Let's click this. This will give us another knight and some cheaper mercenaries. Looks like our mom lost the war. Unfortunate for her. And it looks like our future mother-in-law is still doing work with this claim war. You can see that she's slowly pushing the score back and she's destroying the enemy armies. You can also see that this war has taken six years now. So things like this can pop up and really slow down your conquest. But it's nice to show you an example. And you'll see that once my stack is there, there's enough troops to start sieging. So it's going to take a few months. Let me send these guys to try to chase this stack down. All right, it looks like these peasants are finally revolting. I could grant a tax lien, but reduce my county change for many years. So I'd rather not. So let's say no. And you'll see that 320 guys were summoned. And we can actually crush that with either mercenaries or I can send these guys back. So that's what I'll do. I'll first try to chase these guys and then just quickly send them back. Looks like they're running away still, but finally they're stuck in a corner. So let's kill them. Great. Looks like our counselor died. Let's see who we can assign. Looks like we can assign our duchess, so hopefully now she's happy enough. Looks like she's happy enough, so she's going to leave after a few seconds. Let's get a new commander. So this guy is a pretty good one. Let's see how much he costs. That's a little too much gold for me, so let me just use my courtier here. I'm going to send them to take out the peasants. And then if I pass a few seconds, looks like I got an event for my row antler. So I try to save my little antler. Let's go with this option. Looks like I wasn't able to catch it. Instead, I'm wounded. Since I'm wounded, I want a court physician to treat me. Looks like everyone I could hire is terrible. So we have to come here to decisions, search for a physician, and then I'll get an event in a bit to give me some options. So let's pass a little bit more time. So there we go. Because my duchess is happy now, she has left the faction. And now I am basically faction free once I take out these peasants. So just got to keep an eye on my troops here to make sure they don't get ambushed. And here's the event for a physician. You'll see Violent. That's an interesting name. She's good. And Valido's poor. So let me just go for Violent. I wouldn't want a doctor named Violent, but okay. All right, so these peasants are going to get the what for. My physician can now treat my wound. You'll get an option to either do no more than is necessary, or it's too late for caution, or to leave me be. Too late for caution depends on how good her skill is. Because she's good, there is a chance that you could recover from it, but I tend to just do no more than necessary, since it's pretty much guaranteed to give you a buff to protect yourself. Since I'm also young, this usually means that I could take time to recover on my own, so I'm just going to go for this option. All right, so we crushed those peasants, and it looks like we got lucky, and we lost an infected wound and just became normal wounded. And because we have a physician, over time, this wounded trait will disappear as we heal. So let's enforce our peasant demands. Let's check him out. So he's actually a pretty strong commander, so I want to negotiate recruiting him. Let me uh, just move my guys. I'm going to move them here first. 
Let's continue. So, okay, so things are looking good. Our allies winning her war. These guys are running away. Maybe I can catch them. Kind of. You see that there's this recently disembarked notification. And if we hover over my guys, you'll see that I have this debuff because I just got off a boat. It's going to give me minus 30 advantage. So that's a big debuff. So you can use this to your advantage if you notice enemy troops coming on land. But it's also a disadvantage right now since I'm the one that came off a boat. So let me help take out this army here. And let's take out the capital there. It looks like in just a second I'm going to win this war anyways, so I might not need them to be up there. So let's come down to help finish this war. Alright, so we won against that dissolution war, so we got two more to go. Looks like I got my first point, so I'm going to go for cutting cornerstones since that reduces costs. Let me combine these guys. I gotta just siege them back. And it looks like my mother died, so... Ah, she was executed for rebelling, so looks like we inherited this piece of land. We're actually still under our domain limit, so let's just hold on to it for now. And our brother actually didn't inherit anything. Let's replace our commander. So I'm going to take this over. Since I know both of these enemies are pretty weak here, you can see they have very little troops. I'm actually going to just assault the fort a little bit to make it go by a little faster. Nice. It looks like another girl wants to claim England. Seems like we're going to be here forever, guys. I'm sorry. All right, who wants England? This girl down here. So, all right, let's not assault the fort. Let's finish up this. Okay, we'll take out this. And then let me let me quickly try to end this claim war. So if, if I check here, you see Duke William's hiding in his home. So I want to go and take out his house. So let's try to do that. All right, so she won the Liberty War, which is good. Let's try to go win these wars. Okay, so she was smart and she actually white pieced this war. So now we just have to focus on this new claim war. So let's march our men back over here. We're going to fight with her, I think. Or not. Okay, so she's not chasing, instead conquering, so let me follow her suit. I'm going to go for their capital, and if I click here, looks like the enemy war leader's hiding here, so if we get lucky, we can end this war in one conquest. Looks like they're going to come back to try to take it over, but I don't know where my allies are going. Let's see what they do. So, alright, looks like they're coming all the way, so what I want to do here is I want to assault the fort so that it finishes in 11 days instead of 55. If you hover over the enemy, you'll see that it only takes them a few days to move each square, so we're going to fight earlier than I want to. If I assault the fort, by the time they get here, hopefully I'll be able to defend instead of being attacking the fort. So it looks like a battle will happen in 4 days, just when we capture it, so let's see if that happens. So you see, we just captured the fort, and we'll actually be defending and not attacking, so we have a good chance to win now. So we crushed our first vanguard. We might lose here to their other guys, but that's okay. So we lost that battle, lost quite a good amount of troops. Our allies still chilling out over there. They're sieging this pretty fast. So let me see why she's over there. So the Duchess is here. This guy's up here, so why is she there? Maybe she's in another war? I see, she's in another war. So, uh, let me go help her out, otherwise she won't focus on this war. So let's go help her take out this area. Looks like they already won that, okay. So now she's going, finally going for them. Let's follow her, let's see what they want to do. She wants to come here. She wants to fight, so let's fight. Okay, great. Alright, nice, we won that battle. Took out a decent amount of their men. I'm going to go for Sussex. She's going to go for Berkshire. They might have another fight. Nope. She's going to chase. So I think she can take them out. I'm going to just take out the holdings here. Looks like the queen caught her, so hopefully we win soon. Got another perk. Let's go for a professional workforce. Let's continue this siege. We won that. So these guys might run all the way back to Kent and will be in danger because we're not strong enough for them. So let's actually come out here and help take out these counties. She might be attacking me. Hopefully our ally will help. Okay, she can chase them while I take out the holdings. Looks like the enemy ran into us anyways. Okay, so we finished that. Let's help her finish this. So I expect to win the war soon, so let me get my bishop to fabricate on Ayrshire. Okay, she's winning the battles up there. 
All right, she's taking out those guys. Now I should be strong enough to take him out even if they come. So let me go for her capital. All those years of swinging that archbishop and now I gotta redo that again. Let's fill up our other slot. All right, we finally won the war. All right, how many years was that? We can check by looking when we killed him. He was killed in 1106. So it's been six, maybe seven years since I was able to do something for myself, but that's okay because eventually I'll have kids who will inherit this kingdom. Let me check the line of succession. So now I just have to make sure she doesn't have any sons. So I want to murder my brother-in-law. That way my future wife here can be the heir instead of him. The other nice thing is she's 43, so females become infertile at 45, so that means she's not likely to have more kids. So as long as we get rid of little Ethelweld here, we should be good to inherit in the future. And also because we won so many of these wars, you can see she has max holdings, and most of her vassals should be either new ones or in jail, so we should be pretty good there. All right, so now that we're finally free, let's check our strength against Alba. Looks like he's got one ally who's pretty strong. Let's see. So with our English ally, we can probably take him out. We have a lot more gold, so that's pretty good. Let's go for this county carrick here. I'm going to raise all my troops here. I'm also going to go to a current situation and have her join me. Sometimes the Pope will give you some claims, but you can see it's for a duchy that I don't really care about, so I'm not going to ask him for that. All right, let's go for carrick over here. Let me also check where he's at. Looks like he's at home, so his armies are probably far away. So that's good for us. It looks like there's another war against her. Hopefully she wins that soon so she can help us. All right, we got another perk. So now I'm gonna go for centralization. This is nice because it gives us 0.3 development every month. Looks like those troops are coming back. Let's come here. Let me station besiegers, get my troops back here so they can refill. Looks like they found out about my plot. So I've been saving up for this. So it looks like we're lucky we can convince his spy master. You can see that it's a lot of gold, but it'll give us 90% success chance. So let's, let's pass a little time, see how high it goes. It goes to 59, so we need a little bit more. So let's convince him. All right, so this should be pretty successful. There's still a chance he'll fail, but hopefully he dies. Sorry, bro. With the extra gold, let me just continue building some stuff. Let's come back to this war here. So you see here that we got the event to send a plush carpet to him. If he rejects it, our chance goes down a bit. If I just put it in my own room, I'll get a little more prestige and also make myself more vulnerable. So let's hope he takes it. Looks like he didn't, but that's okay. The chance is still 95, so no problem. Our vassal got caught, so let's assign someone else in the meantime. So it looks like the Queen of England finished her war, so she's going to come help us. So since everything's maxed out, whenever you get these events, you just want to make sure to not decrease the success anymore. So I'm going to go for the safest option and just not do anything. Okay, we won that. I'm going to take over Ulster. Hopefully I could kill my future brother-in-law. Looks like I succeeded. So now when I check my ally, you can see that my future wife's going to be the heir to the Kingdom of England. Okay, we got that back. Let's continue conquering. So since I've upgraded around, I'm going to increase the size of my siege weapons a bit. This way I can siege a little bit faster. Looks like they came back with their ally. We got a good amount of men at arms. We might lose to a battle, so let's focus on out sieging them. Okay, they're going for Carrick. Now I need to take back Carrick, so I'm gonna attack it and hope my allies come with me. You can see that they are gonna come over. Not looking too good. Let's hope this stack helps us. Looks like we might lose that, so let me pause. See if I can hire some mercenaries. I'll go into a little bit of debt. And looks like we're lucky and we got to push them back. Okay, let's take this over. 
station and come back so that they can refill. I might have some more mangonels, so let me raise them here. The battle going on, get my troops back there. So this is pretty bad timing because I'll be in more debt, but I do expect us to win, so let me just take it for now. So I got the duchy title, so next time I could take two pieces rather than one. You'll see that when you're in debt, it'll tell you that your vassals like you less, you have less advantage, developments decrease. So you want to try not to be in debt if possible. Let's fill up our council. This girl's really bad, so let's just get someone who's competent. Looks like my brother was killed. RIP brother. We still have our sister to fall back on. The only problem is if I die and she dies, our game will be over because my nephew. So, but just one more year until I can marry my betrothed. Got another perk, so let me go tax man. We also finished battlements, so if I check my culture tab, you'll see that we are now progressing to the next era. So in the meantime, I'm just going to have hereditary role so we can get partition. I forgot to, but let's also establish the wetlanders. So let's hit establish. There's too many things going on with the wars in England. So same thing, station besiegers, get them the refill. So one of the grandmasters wants to give us some gold for a city. In the short term, we get the gold. In the long term, we don't get the city. Since I'm in debt right now, I'm just going to give it to him. But in the future, you could deny him. Once we conquer this, I think I'll try to fight him. Oh no, looks like my sister was murdered. This isn't good because if we die, then our kingdom is going to be inherited by our nephew who is not part of our dynasty. So I'm really hoping we get married soon and pop out a kid. Alright, let's fight this. That might have been miscalculated. Let's see if we can summon some mercenaries. Looks like they'll be too far. Looks like we'll just have to lose this. Alright, we're married. Let me quickly try to seduce her to get a baby inside of her as soon as possible. Who knew that she was homosexual? Oh boy. Well, this game's on hard mode, so... So things are not looking too good. We'll have to slowly get back our strength. So I need to capture holdings and refill my strength. Let's take back this. We got another perk, so let's go for defensive measures. So I'm going to take this out and then go back to Carrick. You'll see that we lost a lot of score there in progress or Galloway first. Looks like a faction strong enough. Just another peasant faction. This time there's a lot because our war is going on for many years. Let's check. This is a five-year war, guys. This will be realistic at least. It's not going to be easy conquering an empire, so I do need a siege, guys. So let's recruit him. Let's come back here. We can take this out in a few days. We can come back to Galloway. Let's meet him on Carrick. Looks like we're gonna need some mercenaries. Let me try to be a little smart. Let's see, what kind of troops does he have? He's got some bowmen, he's got pikemen, he's got heavy infantry. So I can go for light footmen. I can go for some heavy infantry and just a little bit more. Let me see if that's enough first. Doesn't look like it's enough still. It's still not enough. This is a very impressive army. I am using all the money. I just spent a grand. We better win this. This is not typical. Looks like the peasants are now rising. You can see they're kind of too weak to take out some of my holdings. So let's see how fast we can win this. You can see we got a massive amount of score since we swung the war back. At this point, let's see if we can take them out. We're almost there. So we finally won the war. Let's take that land. Let's go crush those peasants while they are crushing. So I like having the Jure land, so I'm actually going to grant him another title. And now he's super happy. So the peasants have almost captured my capital. Thankfully, you'll see that my troops will get there in 25 days. But let's say I couldn't make it in time. What I want to do is I want to make one of these armies controlled by me. 
That way I am magically teleported here and I'm not hiding in my capital. This will prevent you from instantly losing. So we won that again. Let's put them down. We can finally dismiss. We have a little more stewardship. Let's check on England. Looks like they're steady right now. Let's get a claim on the Isles here. And once we won that war, you'll see if I try to declare war again, I will break a truce. So every time a war finishes, there's going to be a five-year truce. You can check your truces by clicking on yourself on diplomacy, and you'll scroll down and you'll see I have a five-year truce here. The truce can end early if one of us dies. So I could murder him to end the truce early, because it's with him and not with the kingdom. Looks like the chance is kind of low, so let's see if we can boost it. You'll see I could boost it here, so let's convince his queen. We can also go to our council and have our spy master support the scheme. So that would give 13%. So now it's at 19. Let's pass a few seconds. And now that the queen's part of our scheme, it's going to be 72%, which is pretty good. He's also dying, so I might be able to fight him soon anyways. So we're going to just continue this slow and steady process of taking over Alba. All the while, make sure England is very stable. Our bishop's done with the claim here, so let's grab that. Let's have him continue fabricating claims. Let's check the Innovations tab. Looks like High Medieval is still going to be in four years, so let's leave it on Hereditary Roll. All right, let's see if we can murder him. We failed the first time, so we'll have to attempt it again. It's going to take three years now, so basically the same time as the true sending, and also he might even just die early. Since it's going to take that long, let me go build some more buildings. In here in Ossery, there's nothing I want. Let's check Leinster. We can build a trade port. And then Dublin. There's also nothing I want. So let's go to the military. So I have 18 income and 15 expenses. So let's increase the size of our, some of our troops. So I'm going to go for armored footmen. So if I look at the full maintenance, if I get one more stack of them, the cost is going to go up by one per month. So I could probably build two more and still be net positive. So let's do that. Let's also station these guys. And some of these men at arms were inherited from my parents. When I get a little richer or I need to adjust them, I will delete them and replace them. But for now, I'm going to leave them alone. Let's replace our chancellor here as well. This guy really hates us. Thankfully, it looks like my wife got pregnant. Check our factions, check the current situation. And great, I got a daughter, so I have an heir. That means when my wife inherits the kingdom of England. My daughter will eventually be able to inherit that kingdom as well. I'm going to teach her stewardship as if she were a man because in case I don't get a second child, so I'm going to teach her myself. At some point, you might get a found holy order notification. A holy order is a special military unit that you can hire here. You can see the troop count here. They cost piety to hire. The only thing is you can only hire them if you're at war with a hostile faith. And since we're only going to be warring with Catholics, we're not going to be able to hire them. The only advantage of having your own holy order is that you can hire them for free. So let's leave that alone. So I'm going to take off that notification here. I have some money now, so let's go spend it. So take a look at upgrading anything to level 2. Let's see if there's anything here we can upgrade. Looks like I could upgrade this to level 2 here. Dublin. Is there anything I could make? Okay, so I'm going to go from the top and start upgrading things higher than level 2. So I'm going to go for this trade port. We got another perk. So I'm finally going to have divided attention. And now I am at a limit of 8. And I'm going to be making a lot more money than before. I don't want to spend money on him, so I'm just going to cut his clothes. Great, let's see if we succeed. Looks like we don't. We'll try again. This guy is very resilient. In fact, we might be able to declare war soon. Let's check our truce. Only 37 more days. Since our truce is over, let me go present my claim on all of Galloway. I'm going to call my ally since we are relatively close. So spend my prestige. And my bishop just got another claim. Let's also start him on another one here. Looks like someone's trying to murder me, so let's get rid of it. Also gives us some gold. Do I have any rivals? I don't. I guess someone dislikes me. So it took us four years to win this war, and in that time I got a second daughter and the architect perk. I also changed to the scholarship learning focus. So I've taken Ayrshire, Lennox, and Annadale.
So this is the entire Duchy of Galloway, which I have the title of. You can see that they really don't like me because we are different cultures. I just started reigning over them. Some of them have a title claimant. So I'm actually going to come to Galloway and grant my Earl the title of the Galloway so that he can rule over them instead. I have one guy in prison. I'm actually going to leave him there so he doesn't pose a problem for my duke. I got a learning perk, so let me just preview. Right now, windmills will take 42 years, but once I get the perk, it's only going to take 36 years, and it looks like wetlanders will finish in 17 months. And there was the offensive war opinion, so let me click on a vassal. You can see I have minus 29 for being at war. So basically this opinion is if we're at war for more than six months, our vassals will start to dislike us slowly with minus one per month. So the quicker you end wars, the less opinion penalty you'll get. And you also have to wait at least six months or until the penalty is totally gone in order to avoid stacking this penalty again. So if I went back to war immediately right now, then this opinion will keep stacking. So I have to wait until it disappears before I can go to war again without them disliking me. At some point, it looks like he also took over both of these duchies. He's growing kind of strong, so let's double check our troops. We have 2,300 levies and, and 1,100 men at arms, so we should still be strong enough to crush him if needed. Let's use some of our gold to build some buildings. So we have some people we can ransom. These are people we captured, so let's get the money from them. So I got another learning perk. So we're going to go down this hole of body tree to try to live as long as we can. I'm going to check how long my truce is going to last. So it's going to be another five years. He's kind of young, so I'm going to try to murder him so that we can make it go by faster. Looks like my chance is kind of low. Let's hope that I can increase it. If we check, looks like we can only invite one person. So let's do that. Let's go to our accounts, have our spy master support our scheme. Let's see if there's someone stronger we can get. So since this guy is just a mayor, I'm actually going to assign another mayor who has a lot more intrigue. Even though he loses opinion, that's okay. I can immediately revoke his title, grant this title to someone else. And now this guy's going to like me a lot, so problem solved. And let's check our success chance. About 58%, that's not bad, but let's keep an eye out on if we can hire more. Looks like we got lucky and we got a son. So let me educate my son. And stewardship, I'm going to educate him myself. I'm going to go and make sure I choose my son in the succession. So even though we have male preference inheritance, because of election law, since my daughter is the current nominee, she can still inherit these titles. So I want to change the election back to my son. There he is. Let's pick my son for the other one as well. And there we go. And now inheritance is going to go fully to my son. Looks like they're already at war. He is defending a tyranny war, so he might become deposed himself. This means he'll be replaced and I can immediately declare war on them. You can see our gold income is now very high. Let's see if we can build some extra things. Looks like things are still under construction. Let's get this trade port upgraded and let's spend some money on some men-at-arms. So I'm going to keep upgrading the armored footmen. So again, if I hover over here, you'll see the full maintenance is going to increase by 1.14. And if my current army only costs 20.6, that means I have about 6 gold income to spend. So let me upgrade it maybe 3 times. Great. And I'll let the time pass. And you can see the monthly cost is going to be 24 now. Our income only decreases temporarily because it's currently refilling these troops. But once it fills to the max, this income will normalize. So don't worry if you see this discrepancy. Some buildings also finish, so the income's also going to jump up. So the men in arms are done forming. So now my income has jumped back to what it was before. And you can see we are well above the monthly maintenance. So we're doing good right now. And it looks like the war in Alba is over. And it looks like it already changed ruler. So I'm going to be able to declare war on him. Let me first double check to see if the offensive war opinion is gone. So let me click on a vassal. So we still have a minus 22 offensive war opinion, so I'm going to wait a few months. And let's double check our bishop. He's going to take 14 months, so let me, let me wait on him to see if we get the entire duchy. And we'll decide then if we want to attack. Great, now we got the wetlanders tradition. Now if you click on here and try to establish another one, you'll see that it's too recent. It actually has a 50 year cooldown, so that's why it's important to pick your order. Since you want the important things first. Oh yeah, since he's not the king anymore, we don't have to murder him. So let's cancel that murder plot. We have some more gold. Let's see if we can upgrade anything. 
we can upgrade this trade port so let's do that and you might wonder i'm leaving some slots open and again that's because i want to save room for the better buildings and not waste my gold on things i don't want long term because mods came up we can actually upgrade our castles so we're going to work on that so let's upgrade this guy you'll see if we go to level two the keep will give us more tax more troop damage and also some more levies our claim has finished so let's pay for the claim let's have him get started on another one let's go for rick ross over here all right so now that i'm ready i'm gonna attack him for one of my claims let's see if our duke has a bigger claim looks like he just has a small claim so let's go for our claim and it looks like our first crusade is going to be called interesting that he's called money bags i'm going to join this war since it's going to help get us a lot of prestige and piety and also some gold and we can also get our beneficiary, so let's see who's eligible. I usually keep it within the dynasty, so I would click on them and see if their children are going to be a part of my dynasty. You can see that my aunt's child is not, so I'm not going to pick her. She doesn't have any kids, so when she dies, it will go to her sibling. In this case, it should be my vassal. I don't want him to inherit lands away from me, so I'm going to go for my aunt. My aunt also has no kids. It's going to go over to my uncle. So he, she's not a bad choice. And lastly, a dynast member. She's unmarried and young, so she's probably the best choice. So let's pick her. The one thing about Crusades is if this launches in 12 months and they are also pledged to the Crusade, we actually automatically white piece this war because we then become allies in the Crusade. I don't think he's going to be in the crusade because he's busy fighting his own wars right now. However, we can always double check by clicking on the crusade tab, clicking on attackers, and looking for him. And we can see he's not here yet, so we can check later if needed. I think I should be able to win before the crusade starts. So we did eventually win this war, but the crusade already started. And like I suspected, the king of Alba was too busy to join the crusade, so we were able to finish this. However, because the crusade started early, we placed third. My recommendations for max contribution is to fight and win in as many battles as you can. This counts even when your allies fight in a huge stack together, so I missed out on too many fights. It's okay though, my family still got this duchy and I got some gold, prestige, and piety. With the crusade over, I check to see if I'm still at truce with the king of Alba. Unfortunately, I am. However, it looks like he's losing a war for a claim on his throne, so we might be able to fight him soon. Indeed he lost, so now I can wage war again. So I'm gonna go for this little piece here. So it looks like we got lucky, and my bishop can give me a claim on all of Moray, so let's do that. Let's get him started on the other pieces. And some quick info on claims. The purple color means we have a claim for this county. The green color means it borders our realm and will be easier to fabricate a claim for. Versus if it's yellow, you'll see this minus 2.6 debuff for claiming non-adjacent county. The duchy claims won't appear on this map, but I know I have a claim on the duchy of Moray. So coming to the duchy filter, I also know when I claim it, I'm going to take this entire piece. So I actually want to fabricate my claims down here into these sections. So let's go for Drathurn. And to continue the cycle, we win this county war. We murder the king. We war with the new king for the Duchy of Marais. We start a claim on Fifi during the war. And look, we have over 5,800 troops, with 1,400 of them being men-at-arms. Even with everyone raised, we're still making plus 12.6 gold per month. And we easily win this war as well. Alright, and now let's check out the lands that we just got. So we have this ambitious guy here, so that's not good as a vassal. Let's check out this guy in Sutherland. He's a ugly man. Sorry, homely man. He has decent stats. He's also righteous. Let's check out this guy. He's an honest man, but he's irrational. So I think this guy is probably going to have the better AI. So let's give him the touchy title of Moray. So now that he becomes the Duke, you can see his opinion improve massively. And if you came from my guided tutorial, you'll notice that it's been a while since we've hosted a feast or a hunt. And that's because we are so strong now that our vassals can't even rebel against us, and they're going to be pretty happy anyways. So there's no need to do these except to reduce some stress. But always remember you can use these two activities to get the opinion you might need, 
or to reduce the stress if you're getting close to the breaking point. I could probably host an activity once we get some money and free time just to reduce my stress as well. Let's see what kind of claims our vassals have. This guy has the entire kingdom. I don't want him to become king because if you can see, he will become independent since he's our equal rank. But it's useful that he has the duchy claim so we can just claim these titles here. So since I've been working on the duchy of Albany's claims, let's get him to take the duchy of Lothian. So let's do that. Before we could finish that war, our wife who has now inherited England has called for help. This is another claim war, so we're gonna accept this. And as expected, we won both the duchy war and the claim war easily. Since one of my vassals has the last duchy claim on Alba, I'm gonna use my bishop to convert the rest of Ireland instead. If you get a random event that doesn't make much sense, you might have gotten a random harm event warning. Random harm is a game rule located here. There's a few different settings with dangerous being the default, illusion of safety being 25% of the default rate, and etc. I recommend beginners start with illusion of safety, or safe. So this warning event shows my character being all calm and peaceful in the ocean, but this warning means that after 3 years, there's a good chance I'll get the actual harm event. And just 4 years later I get the actual harm event, I'm at sea and my life is in danger. The first default choice as you can see has 20% chance of surviving and 80% chance of becoming incapable. This trait gives huge stat and health penalties and worst of all you can't declare wars or do other things. Thankfully we have the second option because we have the athletic trait. We get to survive this event in exchange for some stress. And some other ways to avoid death or disability is to have high skill levels, traits like Craven or Temperate, or a Court Physician. So essentially, if you see a warning event, make sure you focus on your succession first in case you accidentally die or become incapable. And we unlock the last perk in the Hola Body Tree. This Hola Body trait will give us more health, some stress loss, and also is a saving trait for those harm events. I'm gonna stay in the learning focus and go down this Scholar Tree for the rest of my life for Learn on the Job and Scholar. And another war for my vassals Alba claims, this time for the Duchy of Albany, and another easy win. And you can see the Kingdom of Alba is isolated to just these two pieces of land. If we come to the Kingdom title, you'll see that we can actually usurp the title right now. And if we review the Empire title, you'll see that we're almost all the way there. So we only need 36 more counties. If we check the Kingdom of England, you'll see that it's 41. So actually when my wife and I die, our son is going to inherit both kingdoms and be able to form the empire. So since I only have one son, I could actually just usurp this kingdom title. And then you'll see that the succession is not going to split it. I'm going to inherit both of them. The thing with the Kingdom of Alba title though is it automatically has a election. And so I should elect for my son. And you'll see that he should be rank 1. However, you can see that people can actually vote for someone else. So if I want to get rid of this, let me go on the title and let let me actually remove the election law and now he will always inherit that title. So now we own the kingdom of Alba. Let's review what's going on with the previous king. So you can see he's up here. He really doesn't like us. We can't go to war with him right now to take the lands. He doesn't want to be our vassal because he doesn't like us. However, if we come down here, we might be able to ask her to join. She still isn't willing. However, we can immediately declare war for her. So let's do that. And since I own the Kingdom of Alba title, you can see a new Cass's Belly has appeared. I can seize the Isle of Man because it's the Jure part of my Kingdom title. So when I do that, you'll see that I force her to become my vassal. I also have a claim on it, so I could take it directly from her for myself. Given the choice, I usually prefer to do that. That way I could distribute it to someone I like, or because I distribute it, someone likes me. So let's do that. And easy win. Let's grant this to an Irish Catholic content vassal. We'll sort by Praris for the best knight. And you can see he has plus 100 opinion of us. And once we inherit England as her son, the only pieces left of Britannia are the isles held by the former king of Alba, this duchy down here, and the pieces held by the kingdom of France. We're similar in power, but we can always marry our children for alliances or by mercenaries. So I'll do one last murder and conquest for the last piece of Alba. Then I'm gonna just spend my money on buildings. And when my health becomes poor, then I'll save for my son. Another thing I'll do is I'm going to revoke this title from the Count of Athlone. If I do this now, he'll accept, but I'll get a little tyranny penalty. I'm going to fabricate a claim for it with my bishop, 
And now when it's ready, you'll see if I revoke it, I won't get tyranny because I have a claim. So now we hold half of Ireland. And to continue the strategy, I checked my son and I have a grandson. We're going to educate him ourselves and pick the stewardship education. Also, I forgot to do this really early, but since I only have one son, I don't want him to die for any reason, since he's going to be inheriting both kingdoms. If my son dies, then my two kingdoms will split between my daughters, and I don't want that. So one thing to note is, if I click on my son, he's actually my knight, and I don't want him to be my knight right now. So I can remove my son from military service if I come to the military tab here. And if I click on the knights tab, I can scroll down to find him, and there he is. You can see that we can allow him, which is the default. But for your heirs, you always want to forbid them so that they don't die. And the other thing is, the chance for your knight to die is actually based on their prowess. So the lower their prowess is, the more likely they might die in battle. So if I had a lot of battles with my son as a knight, there might have been a good chance that he would perish before he could inherit the two kingdoms. So with that, now he's a lot safer. So when you get to a point when your upgrades are pretty expensive, like 943 here, or if you get to the point where you max out your building, you can start considering building the other holdings in your counties. So for each county, there's going to be a few slots for different types of holdings. So we have a castle, temple, and city holding. And so this one's maxed out, but if we go to our capital of Thomond, you'll see that we have two slots that are empty. And we currently have the castle, which is always held by us, and the temple, which is leased to our archbishop. So if we click on this empty one here, we can click on construct a new holding. You'll see that the castle and the temple are grayed out. And that's because you first must construct a city, and that's because the game wants you to construct one of each before you can construct doubles. So for now we can only construct a city. And then once this city is built, we can fill up this last lot with whatever we like. And now you might wonder which buildings should you build for the extra holdings, and there's going to be a few answers for that. If you want this specific county of Thalmond to be harder to conquer, you can construct more castles. In order to fully conquer this county of Thalmond, the attacker needs to hold all the castles within that holding. So if you construct more castles, that means you can delay your capital from being fully overtaken. If you want more development, then you usually construct a city as they will have access to more buildings that will give development. And my favorite one is actually to build temples. And that's because temples give you a lot more taxes and levies. So the amount you get is based on your level of devotion. It's pretty easy to at least be faithful, which is 25% taxes and 20% levies. A few pilgrimages or one crusade and you'll be at the Paragon of Virtue, which is where we're at. Compared to Republic vassals, they only give 20% tax and 10% levies. This can be increased, but you need a specific build. You can see here that the church provides over 1,700 levies, which is more than half the total levies from all our vassals. You can see the mayors are down here with small contributions like 24 peasants. So in the theocratic religion like Catholicism, building temples is the most efficient. We also got a notification that windmills is complete. And if we go to our holdings now, you'll see that we have an extra slot for Thalmond. And if we click on construct a new building and we scroll all the way down, you'll see that we now have access to these very powerful buildings of the windmills and watermills. So we're going to build both of these. And before I move on with time, I'm going to go to my culture and I'm going to change my innovation to guilds. And this will let me build another building slot and also all the upgrade levels. And with these kingdom claim factions, one way to long term prevent factions from rising is to go into the title itself, check who the claimants are, and then just meticulously murder everyone who you don't want. You can see at the bottom here our son also has a claim to our kingdom, and that makes sense because he's our heir. And there's all these people here that have a claim that they could press, and that could be murder targets. Our health is still fine, so we're going to live for a bit more probably. Looks like I got another dynasty legacy. So finally, I can get assertive rulers. This has a lot of good bonuses. So the main thing here is that vassals are less likely to join factions. And the short reign duration decreases the opinion penalty for a succeeding ruler. So you can see that one of our vassals had an affair. And because this is not acceptable to Catholicism. I have a valid reason to imprison her. 
So if I click her, you also see that if you come to the faction page, because she's in prison right now, that means she can't rebel or join factions. And so we finally died at age 33, which is pretty average for going down the medicine tree. So we had many years to use those stewardship perks and learning perks to develop and research at a good pace. Now that we inherited the kingdom as our son, he's 46. And it looks like, unfortunately, he's also a little wounded. So we might not live too long. Let me first go to the lifestyle. And you'll see in the stewardship tree that we actually have a good amount of per points. Again, because we are 46 years old, so he's learned over his lifetime. If we check out here, you'll see that our domain limit is 9 over 7, and we want to at least have 8. And so let me check out my stats. You'll see I'm only one away from plus 1. So let's take a look at the council. You'll see that she's on assist ruler, so let's have our managed domain and you'll see that we are over 24 so then we got one more limit and now we're at 9 over 8 and I have an extra county I don't care about so the county of Ribe I'm just going to grant it to someone so let me make sure I have Irish Catholicism let's look for someone who's content and looks like we'll pr be promoting this mayor so let's do that and another thing we could have done is if we come to the lifestyle selection again if we look at the top right here we could have reset all our perk points change this complete administrator tree to a complete architect tree again mainly for the divided attention to give you plus two domain limit but also for the architect so that you can also build more administrator is not bad because you'll see that with likable we get plus 10 opinion we also have toe to line, which makes vassals less likely to want independence. We also have positions of power that gives plus 20 counselor opinion, meaning our strong vassals who are on the council will really love us. And there's even the administrator perks plus five vassal opinion, so that's not bad at all. So since this is pretty good of a tree already and we don't need more domain limit, let me actually come here and I'm actually going to go for the medicine focus, which gives a small health boost to hopefully live a little bit longer. Well, if I'm able to live long enough to get the iron constitution, then I should be able to survive a little bit longer and I may or may not be able to get down to a whole of body. So let's go for medicine. Let's double check for ourselves. And you can see we were bumped from poor to fine. So I know I'm not going to die from natural causes. Let's also make sure we have a physician. So it looks like we still have our excellent physician. He doesn't like us, so that might not be too good because he can join schemes to murder us. Let's check our council. So first, let's check the bishop. Looks like he doesn't like us because we are different cultures, but also I just started ruling. So let's see if we can bribe him a little bit. It looks like we only get a little bit of opinion, so I'm not going to do that right now. And so there's a few things I could do to make him like me pretty quickly. So I can send him a gift, which will give me 21 opinion. So he's at negative five. So the other thing we can do is we can have him educate a child. So we can give him one of our daughters to educate. And you'll see that he can gain plus 15 opinion from us. And I'll say that he'll start endorsing us because of that. So let's have him do that. It's not going to be immediate if you hover over him. You'll see that he's going to have this guardian of your relative opinion down here. And it's going to increase at five a month. So in just two months, we should be positive. Another thing we could have done is we could have given him an artifact, but we don't have one right now. We can also learn a language, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to go for the sway scheme. So let's do that. And lastly, you could, if you wanted to, you could try to murder him to replace this bishop with another one. And that's going to involve a little bit of investment to get this chance a little higher. So let's just leave it alone for now. Let's also appoint our vassals. So immediately you'll see that this duke is not the most ideal because he dislikes us, but also he's ambitious. So let's keep him in the chancellor position. One thing I could do here is also change it to the domestic affairs. You'll see that after a few months, we'll get up to plus seven opinion with our vassals and an additional plus seven with parochial vassals. So if you need extra opinion, we could do that. The task we take him off of is just gaining prestige and opinion with independent rulers. Independent meaning other rulers like the king of France. So that doesn't matter. We don't need prestige. We don't need their opinion. So let's leave him there. Let's put our steward, let's put our marshal, and then our spy master. And you can see that the opinion is massive, both because he liked our father 
the plus 25 and also we got the plus 10 from and also the plus 20 from the administrator line of perks so that's a big amount of opinion let's also go to nominate our successor so let's check the succession tab so since we only have one son he's going to inherit everything so we don't really need to elect him, but just to get into the habit of doing it, let's just elect him anyways for both. All right, now let me go to my faction page and see what's going on here. You'll see that one of our vassals wants the kingdom of Alba. However, I actually have a good amount of opinion with her. So you'll see that she should leave this within a few months. So let's pass some time. And there we go, she's gone. So that was a pretty seamless transition of power. And I'm still maintaining my position as the king of both Ireland and Alba. It looks like a peasant doesn't like us being Catholic, but it looks like our bishop is still converting, so we'll give him some time. And again, peasant factions aren't strong at all. And also, if you just noticed, England also conquered the rest of Wales. So thank you, mother. You've conquered more lands that we are going to need for the Empire of Britannia. And looks like the Kingdom of France has become the Empire of Francia. They're also pretty strong. So it's probably going to take a bit of fighting and maybe alliances in order to take back these pieces from France. We'll work on that once we inherit the kingdom from our mother. So since the factions are pretty quiet and seamless, I'm going to actually start spending gold to upgrade our holdings. And you can see this is really expensive since there's no discounts. So you'll see that if I hover over here, unlike before, there is no discount, so it's the full price of 1110. So I'm actually gonna just see if I can upgrade other things first. Cool, we can upgrade that. We can upgrade this. It's also 725, so pretty pricey. Nothing here and nothing here. All right, so and I inherited the Kingdom of England from my mother, and you'll see immediately that there's some new factions I've also inherited. I've also inherited a holy order. She also gave me some nice artifacts. So let's come down here to equip them. So this one is just a little fertility and opinion, but sometimes in the future fertility might matter. So let's just repair it. This antler is pretty nice since it reduces our strength gain. And also we have some discounted military units. So let's fix this. Now let's check our factions before we make any moves for spending more gold. And again, we inherited a good amount of gold from our mother. So it looks like someone wants to destroy our realm. So this is the worst type of faction because it breaks our entire title. This one here that wants lower crown authority is not too bad. Even if we lose that, we still control everything. You can even preemptively lower your crown authority and that would actually get rid of this faction. And when you're at the lowest, which is autonomous vassals, they're not going to have that faction. And if you noticed, this guy also has a fist. So let's double check our council to see who is not a strong vassal anymore. You'll see that three out of four of them are not strong vassals anymore. So let's change them up to our new stronger vassals. So here's the Duke of Wessex who wanted to destroy our kingdom. He's pretty competent in diplomacy and military. So let's actually put him as the marshal. And so for the chancellor between these three, I will actually go for Duke Henry over here. And the reason why is for the spy master, I'm actually going to go for Duchess Alice. So someone who's craven is also unlikely to scheme against their liege, and she only has a minus 10 opinion, so when we assign her, her opinion should boost up to a lot, like we saw before. You'll also see that we have a too many duchy modifier, and if we come up here, you'll see that indeed we probably inherited one of these titles from our mother. So it's this petty kingdom of Gwynedd. You'll see that it's this little title here, and you'll also see that we've inherited a lot of titles there, so let's double check. And if we scroll down, indeed, you'll see that we have some pieces of Essex and also some pieces of the Petty King of Gwynedd. And again, we don't need these, so let's see who we can give it to. Let me check to see if there's already a Duke of Essex, and it looks like there's already someone here. However, he's part of the Empire of France, so he's not mine to worry about right now. So let me just grant these titles to someone who is going to be a good candidate. So checking our filters, all the good filters, it looks like it's only this guy here. So let's give both titles to him. Let's also give out our other titles of Gwynedd here. And it looks like I have another mayor here who happens to be a eunuch and doesn't have any kids. So the titles might come back to me. So let's just grant him those titles. So now he's a super happy vassal. He's also content. And now we're over the limit because he returned that city to us. So let's grant this city to a random noble. And let's check current situation for anything else. And it looks like we're pretty good there. So now that we have 
all three kingdoms. If we come to the Empire title, you'll see that we can finally create the Empire of Britannia. So let's create that. So after just over a hundred years, we were able to take our humble lineage from a duke to an emperor. And another th cool thing is if you come down to the three dots here and click on it, you'll see there's a lineage tab. This will actually show who the rulers we've played at. So here's the first ruler we played who's our great-grandfather, High King Merchad, who started everything. And then here's our grandfather, who further solidified our power. And then our own father, who really strengthened our kingdom and was also a crusader. And now it's us. We're ambitious, but also flagellant. And you also see our military's higher. And that's because we gained a lot more vassals. So now their contributions are going to be a lot higher. And if we check our bishop, let's see if we have the full contribution. Looks like we're at 35 opinion. So we're almost there. It does look like we're getting the full levies though, uh, but almost the full tax. And if you take a look here, we have 118 tax versus before we were in the 90s. There's also one more cool decision to take as an Irish Emperor of Alba. There is the Reclaim Britannia decision. In order to complete this, we have to completely control the region of Britannia, and all of our powerful vassals have to have a Brythonic or Goidelic heritage. So the only thing next is I want to take those pieces of land that rightfully belong to us from the Empress of France. Let's go and take a look at that title of Essex. Let's see if there's any claimants. So there's this one lady here. You'll see that she doesn't want to be invited. Let's double check to see if she's got a husband. It looks like she doesn't. So I might be able to arrange a marriage with one of my courtiers or someone important. So it only shows my daughters here. And that's probably because the filter we have is still from before. So let's reset that. And now we have a lot more people. And the key here is if we marry her to a man, she should pop up in her court. So let's just pick our courtier here. It looks like she doesn't like it because he's lowborn. So let's see if we have someone better. So it looks like our court physician is a pretty good match. So let's send that proposal. Pass a little bit of time. And there you go. She agreed and now she's in her court. And now we should be able to press her claim. And the reason I could press a woman's claim is because the current ruler is only a child. So that's valid right now. So let's see if we can declare war for that. And you'll see that I can press her claim and take that entire piece of Essex. It's going to cost me some prestige, which I'll get in a bit of time. And you'll see that our strength is a little weaker. So we're probably going to have to marry off some of our daughters for alliances. So let's try to do that right now. Let's click on this first daughter. Let's sort by alliance power. You'll see that the Empire of Francia shows up, but I don't want them. So we got the Kingdom of Bohemia here. Let's click on him. I just like to have matrilineal marriages, but it looks like he won't accept. So that's okay. Let's just accept. Let's check out another daughter here. Click on find spouse, go to alliance power. The empire of France is still there. This time Pomerania showing up. So let's see if she'll take him. Looks like he will go matrilineal. So that's cool. Let's send a proposal there. Let's take a look at another daughter and let's sort by alliance power. And it looks like we have Hungary. Click on him, see if he is okay at matrilineal. Looks like he's okay. So let's do that too. And I probably don't need the last daughter to marry, but I'm just curious to see. So let's check it out. So the second strongest here is the Jarl of Ireland. So he's not too bad, but I don't need her to marry right now, so let's leave her be. Let's double check our son as well. Our granddaughter is not being tutored, so let's educate her ourselves. You'll see that she is still studying stewardship, so that's okay. And let's pass a little time for those alliances to come in. All right, so we got those alliances. Next, I'm going to host a feast to get some prestige. Let's host it in our capital. And it'll also help us to reduce some stress since I'm almost at a breaking point. We got the little fiery fist, so let's see what kind of factions are popping up. So it looks like these English Catholic populists want to become independent. Let's hover over them to see what we can do. Looks like this girl is pretty committed. This guy is extremely committed and this guy is also pretty extremely committed. Let's take a look to see what the factions up here look like. So this guy's kind of committed and because he's only at plus 46 so we might be able to get it with a little bit of opinion and time this guy here is pretty committed at 383 and this girl is also pretty too so one of the things we could do with our daughter is we could try to marry her to one of these stronger vassals to get an alliance and therefore they won't fight with us so let's take a look to see if we can marry our daughter off and so my daughter is down here so i could click on her let's check to see if she has a son available looks like she doesn't so let's 
come to the duke here. Let's see if he has a child who will take our daughter. Looks like he does not either. So let's check this last duke and looks like he does not have one either. So, so we might have to actually fight this faction. So we probably want to do this first before we fight Francia. So let's just watch what happens over time. It looks like my wound healed, so that's good. And it also helps that we have a feast. So if these vassals are invited, they might have an opinion boost. So let's take a look at the guest list. And it looks like some of them are here. So maybe we'll see a drastic change in these factions once this feast is over. Let's just keep an eye on both the faction page and also this feast. We're going to save money for now. It looks like that first faction disappeared because it wasn't strong enough, but it looks like more people have joined this faction. So let's take a look. Looks like my cousin's pretty committed and this duke is also pretty committed. Well, we have eight months to decide what to do. So let's first pass the time and again, save money for a mercenary. Looks like someone else joined as well. It's like others are joining again. It looks like this is finished. So some of our vassals, you can see, gain some opinion. Let's see how they feel now. So she's at plus three. These guys are still pretty unhappy. So let's see if we can focus on her. She does have a known criminal, so I could try to imprison her without a penalty. However, there's only a 14% chance to succeed, so let's not try that. Let's see if we can arrange an alliance with any of the new ones. So let's see if our daughter could be married. And it looks like for our Duke of Wessex here, our daughter could marry his son here. So once they become married, we'll be allies and he can't join factions against us. To see if it's worth it, we can hover over his icon here. You can see that he contributes 26.4% and this whole faction has 157%. And you see that the threshold is 75. So marrying my daughter away to his son won't actually help. So I'm actually going to just leave it alone. You can see things are changing as opinion increases, as other factions disappear. And you'll see that their commitment's a little bit lower, and that's because there's less factions. So actually for the Duchess here, she's only at plus 27. So I might be able to decrease this with some opinion. So let's first try to send a gift, and you see that she's at plus 18. Another thing is that same reason to imprison. I could also grant a pardon for now. That would give some more opinion, and it's still quite not enough. So let's see if we can also offer her a ward. So let's give her one of our daughters. It looks like she won't gain any opinion, so let's not do that. One more thing I could do here is I could grant her a vassal. Because she's a duke, I could grant her a count level vassal. So let's scroll down to see if there are any counts. We got one earl who is here and also an earl who is over here. So let's grant her this earl of Middlesex. You'll see that she got a massive 40 opinion. And if we hover over her, she should want to leave. So let's wait a few months. So instead of leaving on time, it looks like she's just going to be there anyways. And instead, we're going to have to fight this faction. So we could adopt English culture so that they're happy. But instead, I'm going to obviously suppress the rebellion. If we check this war, you'll see that they have about 21k men. And now we can call on our king level allies. So let's come here. Let's call their troops here. And so let's go into the war. Let's locate their war leader. You'll see he's right over here. Let's try to knock him out. So let's see where we can raise our troops. We can put them about here. So let's get them to raise and march them on over. And this is to remind us our council is empty and that's because those vassals have joined the war. So let's put some temporary counselors here. Looks like they're moving away. So let's try to take this capital first. And all these kings are joining us. So if we review the war, you'll see we have a double number advantage. Let's combine our troops. Let's try to look for someone who is a military engineer. Looks like we got one guy here. So while we're sieging, I'm going to use this duke, but when we're near a fight, we're going to use this commander who has more advantage. But let's replace him for now. You'll see it's only 23 days thanks to all of our siege weapons. You'll see the siege is really quick because we have a lot of siege weapons. And the fort level is probably really, really low. You can see it's only level 2. So it only takes 23 days. We're going to be able to come over here. It looks like they're taking over the Wales area. And our allies are slowly trickling in. Once they stack up enough with us, we'll go over and challenge them. In the meantime, I'll just conquer these lands here. We also have a bastard child, and I personally like legitimizing bastards, so I'm going to do that, but you can do whatever you want to. Let's help them conquer this piece of land. 
All right, it looks like we're missing one ally still. So let's see if we can defeat them. So I'm going to click there and change to my strongest commander. Let me double check to see if my son is my knight. You see my son is forbidden, so that's okay. We're safe. I'm going to double check if I could summon mercenary somewhere. You can see I can summon them over here. So we might need to summon them here if they stack on this area. So let's take our move here. And it looks like we're going to win this despite their big advantage. All right, so we won that pretty well. We, had, we need to get a new marshal. Let's go for him. And it looks And it looks like we lost our commander. So let's temporarily go for this guy here. So the enemy has dispersed. Let's double check where the war leader is. So let's click here. So it looks like he's over here. So I could walk over there and capture him. However, it seems like he's heading this way. So let's just conquer these for now and see where he goes. So it looks like he's stacking up there. He might come down to fight. So once I take this, I'm gonna rush over. All right, let's, I don't think I'll make it, but we can still take this battle anyways. Uh, looks like our allies just made it in time. All right, and that's it. We won that war. So let me first get my learning perk. We're going to go down the whole body tree. Let's enforce our demand. So now these rebellious vassals are going to be imprisoned. And so if we click on the factions here, oh, it looks like someone also wants to destroy our title. And he's pretty committed. You can see that there's this big plus 100 Leech does not control entire de jure area, and that's because we're the Emperor of Britannia, but there are these pieces of Britannia that we don't control. So once we take over those whole pieces, he should be a little bit happier. In the meantime, for these vassals, we could leave them in prism here. There is a chance they'll escape, so instead of letting them have that chance, I'm actually going to just revoke their titles and appoint new guys. So right now it's an uh, Englishman. You'll see that we have that cultural acceptance penalty. Let's just revoke these titles. You can see that we could do it without tyranny because he revolted against us. You could even execute them because they did revolt against us. However, his family won't like it. I normally like to just ransom them instead since you can see he has a good amount of gold. We're going to earn 100 gold from him, so let's just do that. And we'll just continue with the rest of them. This guy's not going to give us too much, unfortunately. It looks like he was also married to her cousin, so let's revoke that from this criminal. Let's ransom her. Let's also take this from our cousin here. So one thing about the sorting of the title here, you'll see that if I click on the big title here, it will take the everything de jure under it. However, if I just click on the earldom here, it will only revoke that one. You will only be able to revoke once so normally you want to go for the biggest and highest chunk you have. You'll see that if we revoke this, it won't include this earldom since it's out of the Duchy of Mercy is the Jure. So let's revoke that first here. And you'll see if we try to revoke the other title, you actually see that we'll gain tyranny. And that's because you can only revoke once. So normally try to revoke the biggest thing you can. And unfortunately, we're going to just have to let her rule over this Earldom of West Riding. I'm not going to ransom her. Instead, I'm just going to leave her in prison. Let's go for the other guys here. Looks like this guy wasn't a direct criminal, so we can't revoke from him. Let's check this guy. He's just a baron, so let's just take that for free uh, and it looks like he's just being jailed by someone else so we can't actually revoke from him since he wasn't part of the rebellion so that's all with all those title revocations so let's go and grant them out let's grant this to hopefully someone who is irish catholic and content so we have this guy over here we can grant him this entire duchy and these counties so let's do that you'll see that he really loves us so that's good let's also come here to wessex so while this guy is just the mayor, he's also lowborn. So if I try to grant it to him, you'll see that the, my courtly vassals will actually dislike that. And the more I grant to him, the bigger that penalty is. So when possible, let's just grant it to someone of noble birth. So I don't have anyone else here I want to give it to. So let's look for someone who's craven if possible. Looks like no one's craven. So instead, let's go for the person with the highest opinion of us. So it looks like my dynasty members here are pretty good. So let's check this grandson here. You'll see that there is a grandmother who has some titles and she doesn't have a claim to any kingdom. So her grandkid's not gonna inherit anything troublesome. So let's 
give some titles to him. Let's grant him the Petty Kingdom of Wessex. The other bonus of granting titles to your dynasty members is that they could increase the renown. You'll see that the Duke of Wessex we just granted gives us a little bit of renown. This can increase over time, so it's always nice to have some dynasty members landed. All right, so let's give him Lancaster here. Let's scroll down and give someone York. Sort by opinion, scroll down. It looks like there's just some children here. Let's double check to see this guy's AI. He's a paragon, so he's pretty safe and honorable. So let's just give that to him. Got a few more titles to give out. And in my opinion, you don't want to give anything to your heirs because that means they'll become a ruler and the AI for a ruler is much worse than just the AI for someone who's a courtier. When they're a ruler, they're going to start declaring wars that they shouldn't declare or can't win or they're trying to murder people that they really can't or shouldn't murder. It's just a lot better if you leave your primary heir unlanded and let him just sit in your court and watch you rule. All right, let's scroll down. So this guy doesn't look too bad. Let's check out his AI. Looks like he's pretty honorable and rational. So let's grant Mercia to him. I could grant this title to someone within this de jure. So I could take a look at these three vassals to see who's the best. This guy's no good because he's ambitious. This guy's an evil blackguard. So let's not do that. And this guy's a vindictive zealot. Okay, so they're all kind of bad, so let's look for a better AI. Let's go sort by pin, scroll down. Okay, so he's a content adventurer, so he might be okay. So let's just give it to him. So he's going to take over all three of those troublesome vassals. Let's also double check current situation, because sometimes you might have to transfer vassals for the correct azure, but looks like everything is good. We can also ransom some people, and if they're important, I'll actually highlight it here. So you'll see that this Earl is someone that is my vassal who I could ransom. I would just click on him to double check that he's not someone who's part of that rebellion or troublesome. You'll see that he's under that new duke, so we can actually safely just get the money from him versus if you click here you'll see that this is our cousin who was part of the rebellion so I don't want her to be ransomed I'm just gonna leave her in prison so this guy has nothing important so let's just grab his money and these prisoners also are just for money so let's do that this guy is the peasant leader so we could ransom him for some money. We could also try to recruit him. Looks like we can't recruit him. We could execute him if we would like to. We would get some dread. If we take a look at our dread, it's currently 20. So I'm actually going to do that. If we can get our dread high enough, these vassals will be too terrified to join factions. So you can execute a lot of prisoners to help you control your factions. Let's pass a little time just to see if anything changes. So it looks like this faction got a lot weaker. So I have a good amount of money and so things should be stable. Let me actually just try to press the claims against this Empress. So let's come here. We have enough of the prestige to get the duchy for our claimant here. So let's go to war for that. Let's call on our allies now. So let me start with the biggest guy. You'll see it's going to spend some prestige. The cool thing though is that we don't technically have enough to call them all, but we can go into negative for that. So let's just do that. And the negative is only the resource. It's not actually the level of fame. So this won't decrease. So let's pass a little bit of time. All right. So they joined the war. You'll see it's a little negative, but we did not lose any level progress. So that's good. Let's get our troops summoned here and have them start conquering Essex. Let's take our Dejure title here. All right, and then we just have two more pieces here that we need. So we just finished guilds, so let's change it up into hoardings. We also can establish another tradition since it's 1179. So let's make that another thing we want to do once we get enough prestige. We're going to go for Xenophilic, the social tab. And again, this is going to help us control the kingdom without any cultural penalty. This is going to cost us 4,000 prestige though. So I hosted two hunts and a feast, and we're almost at 4,000 prestige. And there's another thing I can do is if I click on current situation, I could create some titles. And it's a little glitch right now, but I can actually create the Kingdom of Wales title here since I control everything, and you'll see that gets 400. So let's do that. I can also create these duchy titles. I'm not going to create Myth since I hold these titles and I don't want three duchies. So I could actually create Duchy of Man and give this to some of my vassals. So that's the title right here. So let's see who owns the county. So it's this guy right here. Let's actually give him the duchy title of Man, and he likes this more. 
and we have our 4K Prestige. So let's go for the Xenophilic in the Social tab. So let's scroll all the way down for Xenophilic, Establish. It's going to take 14 years, and after that, we'll get these nice bonuses. So that's good. Cool. So we finally control the entirety of Britannia. If we go back to the Reclaim Britannia, you'll see that we finally completely control the region. The last thing we need to do is to have all our powerful vassals be Brythonic or Goidelic. Basically, they can either be Irish, which is Goidelic, they could be Gaelic, which is Goidelic, or they could be Welsh, which is Brythonic, and Cornish, which is also Brythonic. The English and the Scots are West Germanic, so they don't count. So if we click on ourselves, click on our vassals, it will sort our powerful vassals to the top. So if you hover over this guy here, You'll see he's Irish. This guy here is Gaelic, so that's okay. This girl here is English, so let's right click her. We'll use this little pin to track her. This guy here is French, so let's track him. And then this guy over here is Welsh, so he's okay. And so now what I could do is if I take my steward and I promote the culture in this person's capital county, which is marked by their flag here, then there's a chance they'll convert to our culture. And you'll see that if I promote the culture of Middlesex, which is his capital, it's going to take 12 years, so it's quite a long time. Another way you can do it is if you revoke their title, you can grant it to someone who is Irish or the correct culture. However, regranting these titles does not guarantee that the new holder will be a strong vassal, so you might have to do this a few times. Also, you get some tyranny for revoking, and sometimes there's a chance you'll fail. If the vassal declares clients, you can see this guy will rebel against you, but also have four dukes join him. The third and best method is to murder your vassals until it shuffles around the appropriate culture vassals into your strongest vassals. You can combine revoke and grant if needed if you have a 100% chance and can withstand the tyranny. So after three years of murders, finally we have successfully reclaimed Ireland. We get this really cool nickname. The culture changes to Irish, but it was already Irish. And all the counties in our empire gets this reclaimed Britannia for 10 years. You can use this to promote the Irish culture across your empire. But since it's only 10 years, you might not be able to convert a lot. For example, if we click on promote culture and let's just promote Middlesex, you'll see that it's going to take five years anyways. So at best, you might convert one, two or three counties. So it's really not that big of an effect. That's my video on reclaiming the Empire of Britannia. I hope you learned something and enjoyed the content. If so, I would appreciate your subscription and the like on the video. Comment down below if you have any questions or want me to make a video on any topic. Thank you and have a good day.